What's going on, world? It's your boy, Boom, back at it again for This is 50, man. And we got a very special guest today. It's an honor to have this guest today, man. If you guys don't know, you guys just seeing him should know just off the rip, man. He's a real legend, a real icon, a real game changer in this music business and been one for over two decades now, maybe even longer. But we got Sean Paul in the building, man. How you feeling, Sean? How you feeling? Yeah, brother, man. Good, man. Good. Thank hey. you for having me, man. Hey, no, no, hey, no thanks needed, man. The pleasure's all ours. But man, it's um, it's great to see you still out here. You know, still putting out great music. Still like just the longevity itself is just unbelievable, man. Like so, first question I want to ask you, man. Starting out, did you realize how universal your sound would be when you first started doing music? I, I always loved dancehall music. I always thought, you know, I mean, this is my my type of music where people talking in the way oh, I speak to with my friends um, and it kind of started to be recorded around the time when I was like you know a young, a young kid to like like a young teenager and so uh, for me that music was huge and I always been and um, you know even though it wasn't played on every radio station all over the place it started to be it was in every club at first, you know what I mean? There was at least one or two songs I like, yo, love that vibe. So, um, you know, I believed in the music and I, and, I, and I did it wholeheartedly. I wanted to, for my own country people to be like, yo, I like that song, that's dope. That's, that's all I really wanted. So, didn't know that, um, you know, it, it would take me this far and it's been a blessing. I thank God every day and I try to do better by my fans every day, you know what I mean? No doubt, no doubt. Now, I know when you first started, you wanted to be like the king of dance hall just in your region. But to realize now that you like actually are the sound of dance hall reggae music from like from Jamaica to like Germany, Russia, yeah. like, Trinidad. Different places in the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just realizing that, that is it. It's more than a dream come, tr come true, I would say for you, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I didn't understand about the numbers. You know, once you get a hit song in Jamaica, it's like, oh yeah, you're on top of the world, right? But then, then, then I broke in New York and Canada and, and, and London, and I was like, whoa! And I saw the numbers change. Um, so, so it, it, it's always a, it's always a, what can I say? It's been a shock and a whirlwind ever since. Um, but but for real, I mean, dance hall music has so much different players that that I couldn't just say, you know, I'm the only sound. I'm part. I'm a big part of the sound that that took it to places like Kazakhstan and to, you know, what I mean, to Australia big time and to, you know, um, different parts of Europe. So so like, you know, I have to big up people like Shabarangs, people like uh, Bujobantan and, and and people like. Uh, you know, Shaggy, who who uh, all did their thing before me. You know what I mean? And, and those people helped to pave the way. Uh, they helped to finish paving the, the great highway that Bob Marley started for us all. Um, and so that kind of vibe has, has always been very um, important to, to like bring people to the genre. So I, I, I feel proud to be one of the people. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. Now you got an album coming out in March called Live and Living. Now, yes, what, why did you title the album that? And two, will this take us back to the Sean Paul roots as far as musical musically goes? Live and Living. I, I call it Live and Living because a lot of people say to me, the numbers in dancehall is not there and dancehall music is dead. But I'm saying we live and living. Check the post. The post has been there ever since. Uh, but from before, a lot of people in these places like Germany and Kazakhstan and and even and even the states knew uh, dance hall music on the level that they knew it on. So, so with that being said, I was like, yo, you know what? I'm I'm gonna call this album Live and Living because they're paying attention. They're being, you know, they're paying attention. They're being, what is the word? They're paying attention to numbers when they should be paying attention more to the whole liberty and the culture of the music and what we've done. Now, if you listen to reggaeton music and love reggaeton music, it's come from what we had originated here. Also the music in the Caribbean called soca music, 
there is a vibe with that they're doing now down there in Trinidad called Zessin. And Zessin is very more, way more reminiscent of dancehall music than, um, than um, you know, soca music is, their own traditional music. And it plays there year round, except for on carnival time, then they start playing their soca in Trinidad. So also we check out Afrobeat 10 years ago, it didn't sound like what it sounds like today. And so I'm not claiming that everything has come from it, but there's been quite a few musics, um, including these pop people, you know, the Beavers and uh, the Drakes and, uh, you know, the French Montanas and all of those tracks that you hear that got a kind of vibe and, you know, the whole dancehall drum beat and bass lines, um, all of that, it, it stems from what, what we was doing. And so to me, it's a very important music and a very big vibe. So I just had to give some attention back to it. A lot of people say, oh, you're doing well. You, you're international, but your genre is dead. I'm like, don't even try to say that. So that's my answer back to them. And, and it got subtones of, of, um, of collaboration over, over con confrontation. You know what I mean? Everybody on the tracks I've done is 16 tracks. They're all collabs, um, all with artists who I revere in Jamaica right now. So whether it be Buja Bantan, who is like one of my heroes, somebody who started this whole game off for me, um, or people like, uh, you know, Intense, who's a new kid on the block, really, really making waves in, in Jamaica in the sound right now, um, to Skilly Bank, to Massacre, to Sarani, to, to people like Mavado. They all appear on this album. Junior Gang's on this album. Um, so everyone on the album, as I said, I revere either you're an artist or you're a producer or you're a, you're a, you're an engineer. Um, and, and, and it's kind of like, I'm trying to bring unity in dance, especially because I think that we pay too much attention to clash. And when young artists coming up, yeah. we always clashing each other. We're going against each other. Even the vloggers in Jamaica kind of like, find things out in the lyrics and be like, yo, they, they're gonna, you know what I mean? And it, it sometimes it isn't even a real beef. And um, I just think it's helping, it's, it's helping make us all more complacent, these type of songs when we're talking about each other, mother, and, and, and like, like calling out the kids' names of the artists. Like, to me, it's gone too far and it's too much. We should clash because that's a part of our culture, yeah, but we also have taken it too far and so, with this album, I'm, I'm working with people who usually don't work together. Like, you know, Skilly Bang and Intense, they're, they're kind of not, they don't see eye to eye, but they're on the same album. Also, you know, DeMarco is a producer on the album on a track called Everest, one of the last tracks. And it features uh, me, Massacre, and, um, and, and Skilly Bang. And not, all of those, those three people don't get along together. <laughs> but I, I kind of gave them the talk and I was like, yo, this is for, this is the real for the culture right here. This is the positive part. If you're going to do negative things and say that's for the culture, please follow me with saying some of this is for the culture also. So, so uh, that's what the album's about. It drops March 12th and um, features a bugger, 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 bugger talent. So I hope everybody enjoys that. Yeah, you're going to kind of take you back to more hardcore dancehall roots um, from me. But also the new sound of dance art as well. I mean, for sure, for sure. Was well, keeping it in the in the dance realm. You got a song out right now with Steve Aoki uh, in Mambo. Like, how did you yeah. how did you get attracted to that song and and feel like the need to? You know, people come check me a lot, a uh, couple of times a month, couple of times, sometimes a couple of times a week for collabs. Uh, artists that I don't know, artists I do know. So I, I I do know these artists I work with and the producer. Um, but they just called, you know what I mean? And they were like, would you go on this? I was like, yeah, I liked it. It reminded me of the speed of temperature, real fast paced kind of vibes. And that's party, party oriented. So yeah, good looking vibe. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Um, Speaking of temperature. I'm people feeling it and, and it's kind of, it's kind of bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, right? Everybody's loving it right now, especially going into like this being a new year. We still trying to figure out this whole pandemic situation and what. <laughs> We're trying to feel free, man, and and that's the, that was the first thing that came to me when I heard it too. Because in the pandemic, I was out for like five months. I was like in a shell. I was like, I'm not going nowhere. 
uh, for the first five months, I, I was buried. And then um, I started coming out on my shell, so to speak, and going to the studio. And uh, when I heard this, I was like, yo, this is dope. It made me feel, you know what I mean? Yeah, it made, it made me feel like I was at a party and, and vibes in. So good vibes. Definitely. Now you got temperature turning 15 this year, man. Like, uh, first number one hit. Like, I mean, but it, I mean, it's your first commercial number one hit. Now you've had plenty of hits way before that, that a lot of us know you for. But being that temperature turned 15 this year, man, does it still trip you out that one, it went number one, and then the fact that it's been 15 years and it's still relevant to this day? You know, it tripped me out when I won the American Music Award for Best Pop Male Vocal or something like that over Justin Timberlake and Kanye for that song. That, that That's basically the song that, that took me to that point. Um, it's been a whirlwind. I honestly, I liked the rhythm when I heard the rhythm. I was like, yo, whose rhythm is that, bro? And it was my boy's rhythm, a kid named Snow Cone. Um, big up Snow Cone. And, and, you know, he sent me the rhythm. I spot on it. And it was like, yo, that's that's what I feel to do on it. <laughs> and I didn't think too much about it and it started to blow up. So it, it, it it's, it's always a good feeling to, 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 you know, just like something that you do and feel confident about it and, people accept it and in this case the world accept it man i mean up to this day people still doing you know little TikToks with it and stuff so <laughs> I give, give thanks man i gotta give thanks no doubt no doubt and then with the with the evolution of technology and the song evolving with technology like you said with TikTok and whatnot is it still like surreal that you see people like doing different antics to your songs or <laughs> are you using your song as a soundtrack to their movies and TV shows yeah, man. and everything? Man. It's a good feeling, bro. Um, you know, you like to be noticed. I know a lot of um, talented musicians and or, 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 or great singers that uh, they, you know, not a, like they, they sing amazing in the shower and that's what they love, or they do the karaoke and it, but they're they're amazing. You know what I mean? So, so. Uh, to have a fan base just adds to that fire. You know what I mean? To have people that know your work just adds to, 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 the, to the embellishing the feeling of, of, of accomplishment for you as, as the artist and, and also a connection. You know what I mean? Connection with your fans. How, how, how they, I listen to my fans through my hit song. So when I do a hit song, I'm gonna try and make something or expand on that type of vibe. Uh, so yeah. Good looking vibe, man. Uh, big up to everybody who who been checking out me as a fan for these years, even if it's just just recently. But y'all give me strength and you give me, uh, you know, a lot of energy and, and, and purpose too. Thank you. Sure, for sure, man. Did you realize? Did you ever realize that your music would change the world? Like Mike, like a song from Michael Jackson, like a song from like maybe Bruce Springsteen or any other like legendary artists, but like, did you realize your music would be one of the catalysts to change the world, just, just change the perspective of people and just cultures and just blend them together and, and whatnot? You know what, bro? Music, music changes the world. Music, music changes the world. Um, you know, when a kid is learning ABCs, if you teach him ABCs with no mute, no, no melody, he's gonna learn it a lot slower, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's 26 of them, A, B, C, D, E, it's like, nah, but if you, I, I'm talking about a kid who can't even speak, you go A, B, C, D, E, he learns quicker, you know what I mean? Because the, the melodies, uh, so music is a powerful thing that changes people's life every day. Uh, and and for me to, to be involved in music uh, is an amazing thing. Um, also, to be in a genre that's been cutting edge uh, has been phenomenal, bro. I, I, like, I, I just give thanks for this job every day. There's hard times, like or, or hectic times, I should say. You know, things get hectic, but I, I give thanks for it, bro. You know what I mean? I'm big up to everybody who love dance or music and, and, and everybody who love music. Cause music changes the world every day, all the time. Yeah, you, you are a big part of it, man. But uh, about you, <laughs> Call it reggae, man. It's always been forward thinking. It's always been ahead. It's always been futuristic, all the way down to the essence of it. How do you, how um 
being that, how is it that it continuously still evolves? No, rock music evolves. I mean, Chuck Berry's rock music don't sound like uh, Nirvana's rock music. You know what I mean? But it evolved, and and, and, it, and it came to a place where if if Chuck didn't do what he did, then Kurt Cobain couldn't do what he did. It just just how it is. So, um, you know, uh, uh, that this music has has changed the vibe of a lot of people's music. It, it's just part of the circle of life. Um, you know, I, I'm giving thanks that it's been such a run, though. Uh, you know, I've seen since I became an international artist. I've seen people, you know, use, I've heard people use the sound of dance uh, over and over again from R. Kelly to Missy to, you know, Jay-Z's done it, uh, Beyonce, uh, come straight through to nowadays time, as I said before, French Montana, um, Drake, you know, Bieber. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's such a great vibe to know that it's a cutting edge thing that I believed in as a kid and every, everybody in my age group believed in this music uh, that it was you know dope so big up to the producers like Steely and Cleavy like like um Sly and Robbie who uh Dave Kelly Tony Kelly those you know Bobby Digital those guys um are people who produce hits back in the day for me for my age group my 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 um peers and I learned from that, bro. And I, I'll never forget the joy that it gave me. <laughs> and I, I'll always put that back into my song, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure, man. You mentioned Beyonce, and I know we have a lot of fans that want to know, man. Baby Boy was one of your biggest records, or her biggest records, that you pretty much, you know, it was your, it was your sauce that made it what it is today, clearly, clearly. But yeah, we, I wanted, uh, I know a lot of fans want to know, man, will we ever see another Sean Paul and Beyonce collaboration? I would love to. I, as I said, I like music. I love talented artists. And she is very, a very talented human being. You know what I mean? So um, I'd love to work with her again. Uh, you know, uh, Rico Love has written songs for her and also with me. So maybe I should approach it in that respect mm -hmm. and see what happens. Uh, the song was so big, though, that I, 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 we couldn't really have gone back at it, uh, you know, so quick. And so time had to pass. But I've always been up to, to, to do something back. That would be amazing. You know what I mean? No doubt, no doubt. Now, another thing about uh, Live and Living um, is you uh, also plan on releasing a second album this year, which is uh, yes, sir. for your career, I would say. I mean, but being that you release an album and it do, like, monster numbers for years on end. So I guess it wouldn't be, it was, you know, it's, it wasn't really possible for you to do a double a double release in a single year, but what made you decide to do a double release this year? What can we expect from that next album that comes out? Well, like I said, you know, I, 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 I tour a lot, like five months, six months out of the year. So I'm constantly recording too, but it does slow the process down. And since the pandemic, I ain't done no touring. Tour stops, the lyrics are pop, an album after job is it. So uh, that's how I look at it. I mean, I have all this music and I don't want to save it up for, you know, I, I see people doing that, artists right now. They're like, no, nothing's happening, so I'm going to save this. But and I'm like, yo, bro, people need it. So um, I'm going to send it out there. And, and there's more in me. You know what I mean? I, I'm not afraid of it coming out now and then people being like, okay, when the place opens back up fully, everybody just kind of forget about the work that came out then. I don't really have any qualms about that. Um, what I, I feel, Life and Living is the first album that comes out in March the 12th. The other one is called Scorcher and it comes out in May. I haven't set the exact date in May yet, but it's all finished, all done, mixed, everything. Um, so <clears throat> that album is more of a poppy dance hall approach, which is probably what my younger fans know me as, like, you know, songs with Sia, uh, uh, so there's a song with Sia on, on this album, a song called Dynamite, big song. Um, I hope it goes far. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, also, people like Gwen Stefani is on the album with Shen Sia in one song. It's a lover's rock reggae song. Very uh, commercial type of flavor, but the reggae kind of bring the root scene, you know what I mean? Um, also, I've worked with Jada Kingdom, who's an up-and-coming uh, star in Jamaica, big up to her. Um, 
also Tove Lowe's on the album, who is, you know, a, a, a pop music sensation from Europe. Um, she's very dope too, uh, amazing voice. I loved her voice and she got a gimmick on stage where she takes off her shirt and I loved her because of that. <laughs> and we just, we kind of just hooked up and worked together. Um, so we did a, a very meaningful song called um, Calling On Me and that one came out last year during this pandemic. And it was really, uh, you know, it, it, it was really fitting for the times because we all need each other even though we had to stay away at times. And um, so, yeah, big up to her. Uh, Ty Dollar Sign's on the album and Style of G's on the album. Uh, Ty Dollar Sign got a dope song with me called uh, Fan Zone. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good vibe, you know what I mean? So, uh, that, as I said, is a more pop approach. Um, but the first album is, is way more hardcore than so the hardcore old school sound and also new school dance hall sounds. So um, I'm just doing it, bro. I, you know, in, in life, you have to give thanks for life. I, I'm giving thanks I'm still here. I'm giving thanks that, you know, the fans who are going to be able to <clears throat> check out this album are here. And, you know, no matter what's going on, no matter how hard we got to go, we got to push through. And so I'm trying to do my part to kind of like keep this ball rolling. Um, also, we're doing a lot of charity this last, since last year. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, we this we we've, we've been helping people out a lot over the years. Uh, you know, I've been blessed and and, and I, I always give back. So little things here and there. Also supporting hospitals. Shaggy has a big hospital, children's hospital that he supports, and every year I support that with him. Um, you know, there's so much more things that are needed in Jamaica. So this year I did watersheds for the farmers. So it's really just a roof that catches the water and organic farmers can, small farmers can um, have produce year round because sometimes we have droughts in the summertime. We also gave out food um, packages or, or care packages because it contained sanitary, uh, sanitary cleaners too. You know, there's a lot of people who are supporting their whole family, like, 14, 15 people sometimes, they can't go to work because of the lockdowns and they're the only ones. So, you know, people are really having a hard time right now. So we did that. And also we did iPads for the kids at school. Um, you know, and I'll soon be able to send you uh, a link that people could donate if, if they wish to help. Uh, but we, we don't have that link up right now. But the iPads that I did, we did 100. Gave them out to 10 different schools. I think 10 kids from each school. We're about to do more iPads too. Uh, we, we hooked up with a phone company who gave them free data for like two months. So that's kind of cool. And um, you know, I mean, that's what's been going on with me, bro. I, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to be as useful as I can in my community right now, man. Yeah. Definitely, definitely need it, man. Um, but being that, you know, dance hard reggae is, ba is built on big energy and definitely just with the whole pandemic, everybody being enclosed, man, you missed out yeah. on festivals closed down and you yeah, got, y'all got the, y'all got the, the real party, like the real party. So what's <laughs> going a year where it's probably like been like a hundred years or, or so now before it's ever not been a festival, but what's it like being this year that you didn't have any festivals, any touring, like you didn't receive that energy that you're used to receiving, like as an yeah, internet. It's been, it's been weird that way for me, but you know, we just get used to it. I mean, life changes, you know I mean? That's the, that's the, mo that's the, that's the one constant in life. It, it changes. So you have to find your norm within that. And that's why I don't like the saying new norm because every day, is a special day. Every day above ground is a special day. So, like, you know what I mean? Um, you have to find your norm in that day every day. Like, like, you know what I mean? From before this happened to, 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 to mankind, you know what I'm saying? We, we had to find the norm or, or find a way that we could exist and coexist and, and, and help uh, to push humanity forward. So, yeah, I just like to say that, that um, big up to everybody who is out there struggling, uh, the, 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 big, the best thing you can do for you and your loved ones is to remain positive, you know what I mean? And, and know that you are here for a purpose. So um, 
some people don't know the purpose yet. Uh, uh, some people think that their purpose has been missed. I think you're still here if you're hearing this. So if you if you are hearing this, your purpose is still, it, purposes can change to people's purpose can change in life. Uh, maybe you fulfill that part and you have something else to do. So big up to everybody tuning in and trying to be positive in this time. Uh, we're going to get through this, man. For real. For sure, for sure, for sure, man. And then, uh, man, you made a lot of music in your career, man. I got to ask you, man, what are five reggae samples, reggae or dance hall samples that you haven't used yet that you really want to use? Whoa. Uh, well, I'm going to big up one that's on this album that I didn't get to use until just now. So Sasha, she has a song with me called I'm Still In Love. But she also had a song when she was 16 years old. And she's going to hate me for this because she's a Christian now. And <laughs> but she has a song called um, Kill the Bitch, where she was she was going she was going at a girl in the song, you know what I mean? And saying she's she's the baddest. So uh, we use a part of that sample. And she said, oh, say that one, I come in, buddy. I, I come in, buddy. I, I come in, buddy. So um, that was one that I like to use that I that I would have liked to use and now I have it's about to drop on an album and next one is um is a song called murder she wrote murder she wrote is a classic especially even the rhythm the rhythm is what a lot of people don't understand has kind of uh spawned all of this kind of stuff that um you know people do in the pop world with it That's from this song that I'm talking about. So, murder she wrote, na, 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 na. murder she wrote. That would be one that I want to sample. I think I'd sample the first one. I know who the single girl her name is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd sample that first part. Um, let me see which other one now. Which other one? Um, it's been done already, but that's one I would have loved to use. Uh, big up to Junior Gong who used it. Uh, big tune. Out in the street, they call in murder. Yeah. <laughs> to... So his song is called Welcome to Jamrock. But yeah. that song, I believe, I don't remember what it was called, but it was done by Aini Kamosi way back in the 80s. So, uh, yeah. Um, world, I think it's World of Music. Uh, world, world, I get the music. Right. Anyway, world of music or world of reggae music or something like that. That's how it starts out. So that would be one that I want to use. Um, um, I think Bob Marley is too classic to sample. For me, it's like one song of his. I don't even want to do over a song of his. I've done it renditions on stage, um, but 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 he he's uh, you know so prolific with his lyrics. I don't think I want to chop up none of those. Um, well, maybe I would, I would I would use Peter Tosh because he had important messages also, and he had a song called "Legalize It." So maybe I kind of snip that "Legalize It," even though we're all halfway there. The pot smokers. Um, and let me see, let me see now. Um, uh, "Bam Bam" would be a good one. I think people have have uh, have already done that though. Um, <laughs> yeah. What a bam bam. Bam, 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 bam. That was Sister Nancy, big up to her. Uh, she was actually singing over Toots' song. So big up to Toots also. We, we lost him in the pande pandemic, man. So uh, big up to one of the generals and the foundation sound of, of reggae music, Toots. Uh, God rest his soul, man. Um, um, let me see, who else now at a, at a sample? Shabaranks. <laughs> yeah, so Shabarang's got a song called Ting a Ling a Ling. It's a, a dope song. So he's like Ting a Ling a Ling, school bell a ring, and, and um, he's just kind of talking about the ladies, like you know, the ladies are um, fighting over him, like 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 they fight over food. <laughs> so so big up to Shaba. I would use the Ting a Ling in, in something, and I, I think I went five now. Did I go five? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. But those are my those are my cuts. 
Yeah. Sure, man. But a lot of people don't know, but being that this is 50, man, you and 50 have a song in 2003 called You're, You're Ready, pretty much. Yeah. Man, but we yeah. got to know, man, will we ever see another 50 Cent and Sean Paul collaboration? Could that could that be possible? I don't have no, no, nothing against that, man. I mean, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen him in forever. I mean, we was on tour back in the 2003s for a lot. And, um, you know, a little after that, but yeah, I, I don't have no no qualms about that. I, I for me it's the song, you know what I mean? If somebody gives me a song that they want me to be in, it have to move me. Uh and a lot of songs move me, so yeah. Um I don't see why not. Sure. Now seeing you as an in an in an international star, seeing fifty rise to an international star in his own, like what's it like just seeing that star cross? It was funny because uh, Give me the light broke and I was huge. And then I heard this little song, <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, that's a dope tune. Like, and I, I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't know the movement with 50. Uh, and um, I was like, This this kid, this kid's hot, but I didn't know he was gonna blow like, like, blow up like he did. And um, you know, uh, the next thing I saw. <laughs> <laughs> like damn, and then he surpassed me as an artist. Like I was like, wow, he's like. At first, he was like, yeah, that little dude got a song. That's dope to me. You know what I mean? Because I was, I had a, I had a, a hit number one song out there. So, um, big up to him, man. I, I, I do work with him for sure. And to, to see how he's, you know, when we was on tour, I would hear him speak about, you know, he's gonna put out a shoe and he's got his clothing line. And he was just, he, that's all he would speak about backstage, for, for honestly. And I was like, this dude is like business oriented. And I wasn't, you know what I mean? And and I really don't feel no way about, about myself not doing, but I feel damn proud of him, bro. He, he stuck to his guns and he, he, he he's done an amazing job, bro. He, he, right now I'm, I'm on his, I'm on his, <laughs> I'm on his show. Right? This is, so yeah, so big up to him, bro. Big up. No doubt, no doubt. Well, man, I won't waste too much more of your time, man, but it was a pleasure speaking with you, just having a chance to speak with a legend who I've, it, I've grown up to, to your music. I've danced to your music in the clubs. I've had plenty of great yeah. nights with your, with your soundtracks. I can tell you that much, man. <laughs> like I said, we got Sean yeah. here, man. Nope. You got his album coming out live and, and living. Coming out in 2021. You know, and then uh, what's the lead single on the project? So we can make sure people go get a preview of the project right now. Yeah, the lead, sing the lead single is a song called Boom, featuring me and Busy Signal. Uh, there it is. That's the artwork for it. Busy Signal, a dope MC. If you don't know him, go check him out. He's going to appear in this song um, in, on March 12th with me. Uh, boom. So, yeah, that's the lead single coming out. We're about to shoot the video as well. I think same week. So... It'll probably be a few weeks after that we get, you know, we put out the video for another look. But yeah, check out Boom. And also, I, I'm doing things unconventional this time. So I have also a, another single I'm calling the warm, the warm up single. And that features Intense. As I said, he's uh, one of the cats who have a lot of um, songs out right now in Jamaica, and, and, and kids are really in tune to his sound. So. I'm 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 happy to present him to my fans or people who might not know him, and um, see if they they check him out. It's more hardcore, as I said, and 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 dope. So that's gonna drop right before, boom. Uh, so as I said, it's a warm up single. You can check out that one and check out boom. You know what I mean, for sure, for sure. Now a lot of people don't know, man. You got an album turning twenty this year. This year, yeah. oh wow, man, how does it feel, man? Stage one turning twenty this that's year. Dope. That's dope, bro. I mean, you know, when I first start, I did my first song, I remember sitting down, scratching my head, being like, yo, I'm going to keep this up now. I, I, <laughs> I got to keep this up. I got to have more lyrics, more rhymes, more songs. And uh, to be to be here at this point now, 20 years later, uh, that was a hit in Jamaica. And then the next album, Dutty Rock, took me international. And it's just an amazing feeling, man. Yeah, I, I can't. I would give thanks to the fans. Thank you very much for supporting me. Brilliant. Now, off stage one, man. Twenty years now, man. What's what's your favorite song on the album after twenty years, man? Stage one, wow. Um, I still I still like Infiltrate. 
<clears throat> it was one of my songs where I, I thought I went really hard in it. And even though I used a big word like infiltrate, because out here everybody was like, what the, what kind of word is that, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I was I was like, yo, you know, I, I, I'm saying the ladies don't mind if you if you approach them. Uh, there's some some kids who are kind of going on like they didn't understand what a man's supposed to be. So I was like, I was kind of like, you know chopping it up for that and saying like yo don't don't feel afraid of the girl like go go talk to her but i went really hard in the lyrics with it so i love that song yeah melody also very dope no and rhythm. for those that don't know man before you check out uh live and living you know before you, check, <clears throat> before you go back to dirty rock man make sure you check out stage one it came out in 2000 you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sean paul yeah. real debut pretty much his real debut album yeah yeah it was Turns 20 this year, man. And Dirty Rock turns 20 in uh 2022. Yeah, yeah, in a couple months. Uh because you know things was banging back then, man. So we try to keep it blazing all the way around. To, to this yeah. Well, like I said, man, it's a pleasure having you, man. It was an honor. It was an honor just to speak yeah, bro. for a moment. You know, we look forward to more great music from you, just seeing you accomplish more great feats as an international artist. I mean, we we still gonna always remember you as that as that man from Jamaica, you know, making everybody right. dance. But just to see you transcend to an international star is amazing. And always, thank you for your contributions. And you know, you, look forward to seeing more from your work. Like I said, make sure you guys go get live and living. You know, March twenty first or March twelfth, twenty twenty one. And yep. uh, that's all we got, man. We out of here. This is fifty. Peace. Thank you, bro. No thank you for the time. Here. Yeah.